Hi guys, welcome back to our third geography lesson. Um, so we're still focusing on the Western region. What we've done so far is we've looked at our sketch of Ireland, okay? We've looked at our physical characteristics, which we're gonna kind of glance back on today, our climate, relief drainage, and soils. Today we're going to move on to primary economic activity with the focus on agriculture. Now we're going to start off, we're on page number 11 of your notes and we're going to start off by looking at some exam questions. Now guys please don't forget the list, the total list of exam questions are at the back of each set of notes so do glance back at every single question okay. Now we're going to focus on what we have as I said on page number 11 so I'm going to come over here. Now Going to get you first of all to go down to the last question there, the 2008 question that you'll see here. So it asks us to examine the development of, highlight one of an, of, apologies I wrote it down wrong for you, development of primary economic activities you have studied, okay? Now this is in relation to an Irish region also. Okay, now with regards to primary economic activities, so just highlight there, primary economic activities, sorry for now my misprint. Here I want you to look at primary economic activities. Circle the S, they're looking for more than one, okay? Now, primary economic activities that we're going to look at, first of all is agriculture. And the second one, which we're going to look at, is fishing, okay, in the Western region. Now, when we're talking about our Irish region, and just highlight Irish region for yourself there, just pop down beside this, the Western region. Now, remember for yourself, 15 apologies, 30 marks means 15 significant relevant points and 15 minutes, okay? So 15 SRPs, 15 minutes. Now, we'll glance back up to the very, very first question. Little bit different of phrasing, and it connects our physical characteristics. Here in the 2017 question on the top of your page, it says, examine the, highlight the words physical characteristics or physical factors, and circle the S. Now, here are physical factors. Take a second, write down your physical factors, your four headings that you can include. Now, once you have that done, my four headings are our four headings that we should have from learning our previous essay is climate, relief, drainage, and finally soils. So there are physical factors or our physical characteristics, okay? So we're trying to link these here in on this question. Here, that influences one primary economic activity. Now guys, if we're asked for one primary economic activity only, we're focusing on agriculture, okay? So just like we did in the greater Dublin area, we're going to focus on agriculture. In a, again, highlight the words, Irish region, pop down the Western region that you have studied. Now, again, 30 marks, 15 significant relevant 15 minutes. Now there are some other questions and you'll see on your page you actually have a 2014 question. Now if you look at the 2014 question it actually said count for the development of their highlight agriculture, highlight Irish region. So agriculture in an Irish region, pop the western region above that, that you have studied with reference to highlight two. So any two of the following. Now, they give you relief, they give you climate, and they also finally give you market. Now, I want you to take one second with that question there and actually think to yourself, okay, I'm in my exam, I'm looking at agriculture, what do I know about relief? What do I know about climate in the Western region? Now, if we start off with relief, what we know is that there's a really harsh terrain in the Western region, okay? We know that it's, I suppose, particularly upland along the coast, and then as you move further east, towards the east, kind of the east, Galway and Roscommon, you have your low-lying areas with better soils, better drainage. When you're talking about climate, similar, very, very similar to your greater Dublin area. Cool tempered oceanic climate or maritime. You're speaking of temperatures, okay? So approximately 15 degrees Celsius during summer, approximately now, when you speak then about your precipitation, quite high, 
1,500 to 2,000 millimetres in lowland areas, that's the average. Upland areas a little bit higher, approximately 2,500 millimetres per year. So that's there talking about your climate. You might also mention your hours of sunshine, 3 to 3.5 per day. Now the one I do want you to kind of think about there with that 24 question for anybody who doesn't have the notes in front of them, it mentions March as well. Now, we spoke about market prior to this with regards to the GDA, but it is quite similar, okay? Now, although the market of the Western region may not be as affluent, okay? So, I, if you don't know the word affluent, just wealthy, okay? So, it would be regarded as a more peripheral region, lower incomes on average. It still has the same, I suppose, it still has the ability to transport it, its goods, okay? Its finished products to other areas in Ireland, although the transport links may not be as good, okay? You also still have your free, I suppose, free movement of people and goods with the European Union, okay? So any goods produced there can be exported without tariffs, without barriers to other European Union I suppose everybody's looking for everything in Lidl these days, so if you have any questions, I'd sell them this week. Here, we're going to start across the page. So if you go over to page number 12 and start having a look at your essay. Now, if you want to pause here for just a second and actually take a glance down through the essay. So maybe glance down through it, highlight your keywords, highlight your key terms, and then we're going to kind of break it up. Now, once you have that done, so once you've had a look at your essay, we're going to actually go over as far as page number 14. Now on page number 14, what you should have, just like I have here, you kind of like, I suppose, a little grid where we're going to divide up the essay. Now, after reading that essay, what you should notice is that I've been very good. I've taken an awful lot of information we had from our physical characteristics. And I've brought it in here because there's no point of us if we have this information, not using it. So you're going to see that I had mentioned, I started off by saying agriculture in the Western region is hindered. So it's hindered by the harsh terrain, the poor soils, the abundance of rainfall or precipitation throughout the year. So I started off by saying how my physical characteristics have hindered agriculture, kind of reflecting on this question here. After that, I mentioned a lot about my climate, so I mentioned the fact the average, I suppose the average temperatures, 15, my 5 slash 6, okay, very similar to the GDA. I've mentioned the fact that we have my prevailing southwesterly winds. I've mentioned the abundance of rainfall, 1,500 millimetres to 2,000 per year, a little bit higher in upland areas. 3 to 3.5. 3 to 3.5 hours of sunshine per day. So I have all that mentioned there. Now, every single thing that is mentioned there to start off in paragraph 1, 2, and 3 is linking these physical factors, just like they asked me to do here. Okay, so I'm linking them up. I'm telling my examiner, here's my information about my physical characteristics. Here's how it's going to influence. Now, once I got through that, you're going to notice my first part or my first section here, if you want to put a little kind of divider with it, is for my tillage crop. So just before you see these were these conditions restrict, okay? So where we're going to start off with is our tillage crop. Now, tillage and cereal crops generally are crops which need quite a climate, okay? They need a growing season, okay? Similar to what you have in the GDA rather than the Western region. Now, as a result of that, what you have is you actually have poor growth of kind of profitable tillage crops. For example, barley. So if I take barley as one tillage crop, which is produced in the Western region. Now, as you've seen from going down through your essay, only around 2.4% of the national barley crop is actually produced in the Western region. Now that's very small in comparison to the GDA, which 11% is produced there. Now, the Western region takes up, it's approximately 20% of the land in the whole, the entire Republic of Ireland. So it's actually quite a large area for such a small, 
I suppose, small proportion of the barley crop to be produced. But that's really related to or linked to the fact the hours of sunshine are lower, so it doesn't ripen as early, so 3 to 3.5, I'm going to keep repeating myself, and also your poor soils, okay? So a lot of pods oil soils, a lot of glee soils, um, peaty soils, your blanket bogs, and obviously you do have some of your brown earth soils, okay, and loom soils. Now, so barley, 2.4. Now you do have other more, I suppose, or apologies, less profitable crops in the GDA. Now, really the two which, would, which are there but are kind of a little bit less profitable is first of all, if we take mushrooms. Mushrooms are produced throughout the Western region. They're quite popular, okay? Why? Because they're quite quick to grow. Okay, and you can do a lot of this indoors as well. Now, the last one here, what's cultivated is actually grass. Grass as fodder. Now, fodder is basically your feed for your livestock during the winter months for anybody who actually doesn't realize that already. Now, there isn't a huge emphasis with regards to tillage crops and cereal crops in the GDA, the ones that actually are there are less profitable, okay? And kind of smaller amount produced in comparison to the Western region, which produces quite a lot. Apologies, the GDA. I'm, I'm making the same mistakes as I was earlier on, so I do apologize. Now, moving on from there, and I've drawn two amazing illustrations for you just in case um, anybody needs a good laugh, or we don't know what these are, okay? So cow, sheep. Okay, so if you haven't seen one before, there you go. I even drew you pictures. Now, moving on from there, I'm only joking with you guys, I promise. We have our pastoral farming. Now, with regards to pastoral farming, and you should know straight away, okay, well, if my drawings are actually too bad, you, you may not, okay, just to point out. Here's a cow, here's a sheep. Now, I'm going to focus on the sheep for a second and what you actually already know about sheep. Now, we mentioned sheep when we were looking at the GDA. We said that sheep... Farming occurs in the Wicklow Mountains where you have, I suppose, where it reaches up to 1,000 or over metres high. You have there your steep slopes or your steep gradient. Now, why actually does sheep farming occur there? It occurred in the Wicklow Mountains because sheep have very, very good balance and also they don't need that kind of rich, luscious grass, unlike other livestock. Now, similar in the Western region, you have quite a harsh terrain quite a lot of steep slope, steep gradients. So sheep farming is actually widespread, okay? Sheep and goats as well on these steep slopes. Now, unfortunately, sheep farming isn't actually very, very profitable, okay? Just like it wasn't in the GDA, okay? So in the Western region, it's not very profitable, but it is widespread. Now, when you come up here and you're actually talking about your livestock, okay, your pastoral kind of, I suppose, cow farming cattle, okay, whether whatever type it is, beef, suckler, so on and so forth. Mainly, it is focused on the lowland areas of Galway and Roscommon, okay, so that's where you'll find it widespread. Now, you do need that kind of more rich, luscious grass, and it generally needs to be lowland areas for cows, okay? So for cow grazing, it's going to be lowland areas, unlike sheep. So not that steep gradient like it had been previously or we had previously discussed. One thing to mention that dairy farming is not widespread, okay? So do not mention dairy or you may mention it, but do say that it is not widespread. It is actually quite rare as a result of kind of the quality of grass that you have there. So with regards to pastoral farming, first of all, We'll start off with our cows, okay? Generally, lowland areas. Now, lowland areas, again, mention, think back yourself, what do we learn about our physical characteristics? What do we learn about the relief? We said lowland areas, the east of Galway and County Roscommon. Again, where the gradient, the slope is quite gentle. Okay, so that's important to remember for yourself. Now, if you do want to mention dairy farming is not widespread. And by saying that, you're telling your examiner, I suppose, about the quality of the grass there. Now, with regards to sheep farming, okay, sheep and goats, upland areas, this is most common here. 
Now, with regards to upland areas, remember you're going to find them along the coastline, predominantly Mayo and Galway. Now, if you wanted to jot in, I suppose, a couple of points which we have mentioned before, they have themselves. which is what makes these steep slopes suitable for them. The problem with sheep farming, as I mentioned before, it's not profitable. So it's not very profitable in comparison to other types of farming. Now guys, these are some of the points that you can relate to your relief, your climate, your drainage. And as you're going through this, and I suppose as you're going through the essay, you're gonna see a lot of the physical characteristics noted in. Just I suppose for your own sake, in case you are given something like the 2017 question back here, make sure you focus on them and think to yourself, okay, that's a physical characteristic where I mentioned climate, relief, soils, or drainage, okay? Because you know that already, you've now learned that in lesson two, so it's important to bring them in here. Now, what we're going to move on to now is we're going to have a little bit of a I suppose like glance at the farm and the farmer themselves in the Western region. So I'm gonna take this board, or I'm gonna take this board behind me, give it a wipe off, and I'm actually going to, I suppose, focus on the farm and the farmer now in just a moment. Okay, so guys, just looking, I suppose, at the farm itself in the GDA and at the farmer. Now, what do we know about these? Now, these are linking up our human factors, really, okay? Because what we're going to look at here is the size of the farm. We're going to be looking at incomes. We're going to be looking at where the incomes come from, where actual farmers make a living from, and how I'm going to bring in a little bit how it differs from the GDA. Because as we're going to see after this in a couple of moments, I'm going to explain to you there's a a comparison essay that we're going to have a look at. Now, with regards to farmer, farms, as you can probably imagine, farms in the Western region are small, okay? So there are some of the smallest farms, I suppose, you'd see throughout Ireland. Now, why is that? It's mainly because they are fragmented or broken up into sections, okay? So a lot of the farms in the Western region are fragmented, they're smaller okay, in comparison to what we have in the GDA. Now, on average, what you have is hectares, okay? They're approximately 37 hectares. So the average farm is approximately 37 hectares in size. Now, go back to your GDA, have a glance back there. It was 44 was the average in the GDA. So that's a significant difference, okay? It's a huge difference with relation to the size, the area of it. So farms are smaller. Now, what you have in addition to that is 30% of farms within the GD or within the Western region are under 10 hectares. So 30% of farms are under 10 hectares. Now that is quite a small farm, okay? And it just shows that kind of the idea that they are fragmented. i.e. split up into little pieces. Now, what all this does is this makes it hard for development of the farm. It makes it hard to make a farm very profitable, okay? And as we're going to look at, just when we look at the farmer, a lot of the time farming in the Western region is actually seen as a part-time job or almost it's described as a hobby in some cases Sorry. to a lot of because it's not their primary source for an awful lot of people, okay? So that's an important point to mention. Because of this fragmentation, the development of it is actually not, I suppose it's not that well. And again, link in there the fact, the poor relief, the harsh terrain, the abundance of rainfall throughout the year, all them points hinder it and is why this occurs. Now, when you look at the farmers in the G or in the Western region in comparison to the GDA. First of all, to note that the incomes of farmers are quite low. So they have a lower income than you would see within the GDA. Now, obviously, if they have a lower income, it means that they, that's going to mean that they will need some other source of income. And that's why it's seen as, I suppose, a hobby in some cases, or it's seen as a part-time job, or it is a part-time job for a lot of people. Now, one thing and I suppose to mention, as I said before, it's a part-time job or hobby, okay? So it's seen as this kind of part-time job 
or a hobby for a huge amount of farmers, okay? So they do need a secondary source of income. Now, when you're talking about the farmers as well, and I know I mentioned this with the GDA, I told you a little bit of a story, which I better not tell the camera, okay? Because I don't want proof of it on YouTube. But farmers in the GDA, they're, a lot, or apologies, the Western region, there I go again, is they're generally a lot older, okay? So 30% of farmers within the GDA are over 65. Now, 65 retirement age, okay? So that's a huge amount of farmers over that age. So 30% over the age of 65. Now, as we mentioned when we looked at the GDA, we said that farmers there were really young, they were innovative, they were educated, they were upskilled on all these different techniques. Individuals over 65 are not going to want to bring in all these new strategies, all these new pieces of technology, which we mentioned, okay, in class, into their farms, especially if their farms are small, they're kind of just keeping it maybe to hand off to a son or daughter or niece or nephew, whoever it may be, okay? So a lot of the times, as a result of that, they're not very profitable. Now, in relation to the farmers, their farmer, or their income, their income is low, okay? Lower than the GDA. And in relation to their income, it's, a, it's an important point to make that the majority of their income, 68% of farmers' income on average, is estimated to come from the European Union, universities, okay? So there was a lot of schemes that we do mention throughout the essay. We mentioned the CAP, Common Agricultural Plan. We also, also mentioned reps before this and discussed how things like, I suppose, having a tidy farm, be, being environmentally friendly on your farm will get you these subsidies, okay? And the reason we get these in the West of Ireland in comparison to the EA is because it is a peripheral location, it's a peripheral region for the European Union. Now, guys, that's agriculture done. So just back for two seconds. Let's glance back at the question over here. So we looked at two questions. Both because it's on camera, we can't cut, we don't have as much time. But I just want you to focus on these questions. So we looked at agriculture. We have not looked at fishing just yet. Looked at, in particular, we kind of glanced over the two of the questions. We will structure them as questions at a later date. But we mentioned the physical characteristics. We've looked at agriculture. We've looked how it has been developed as a result of the physical characteristics, the four, climate, soils, relief and drainage. We've also mentioned some human factors like the farm and farmer, okay, which are your human factors, as I mentioned, which I suppose hinders its development as well. Now, guys, one thing to point out or to remember, you can be asked, and I know I mentioned this in class before, to compare two regions, okay, two Irish regions against each other. Now, if you are to compare two Irish regions against each other, that is obviously going to be the GTA and it's going to be the Irish region. So I just want you maybe to take out a sheet for yourself, maybe it's tonight, maybe it's tomorrow night, and actually see once you have both learned, okay, so once you've done both, take out a sheet, split it in half, and write down what is your points, okay? What is your main points for both of them, okay? And how do they compare and contrast? Now, there will be a lot of similarities, particularly for climate, but there's an awful lot of differences as well. So I just want you to think for yourself over the next couple of days, maybe write it down, as I said, and kind of get that into your mind because you will see that as an exam question. If you pop to the back um, of your notes, it's on the back of the notes. Now, guys, I'm going to leave it at that and we will see you in the next lesson. Bye now.